We are one adventure at a time. Dave, Carrie, and Rudolph. We are excited to start our third year of full-time living and traveling in our tiny home on wheels. Join us as we travel North America, exploring and sharing the beauty around us. Last week, we explored the shores of South Padre Island. We drove on the beach, and of course, we got stuck in the sand. So it doesn't look like we're that stuck right now, but we are. With Port Mansfield Channel dividing the island, we head three hours north to Corpus Christi, Texas. Our destination today is Padre Island National Seashore. Padre Island National Seashore consists of 70 miles of beach to explore. North Beach, Malaquite Beach, and South Beach. If you have a capable four-wheel drive vehicle, you can explore 60 miles of South Beach all the way to Port Mansfield Channel. Entry into the park is $25 for a seven-day vehicle pass. Most people will purchase the annual National Park Pass for $80. That's good at any national park for an entire year. In our case, we get the annual military card because Dave is a veteran. Once inside the park, you're allowed to camp on North or South Beach for 14 days free of charge. Today we are in Texas. We're about 10 miles outside of Corpus Christi. And this is Padre Island National Seashore. So this is a national park here. We are camping on the beach for free. We rolled in around sunset last night and last night's sleep was amazing. Between listening to the sounds of the waves crash against the shore to the feeling of the salty sea breeze coming in through the window. It was perfect. I am slightly concerned about us getting stuck again and have brought the traction boards down already. Rudel's loving his time on the beach. And Carrie is doing a task that never stops when you're camping on the beach. Yeah, this is a losing battle. It is a losing battle. That I keep trying. <laughs> yeah, it, so we sweep out Oh, about, what, five or ten times a day? Easily late. So we can keep this up for about a week, and then we're ready to leave the beach. But we're going to stay here a couple days, and then we are going to explore the rest of this national park. Rudel's getting a little bit of a trim. What are you doing, Carrie? I'm trying to keep his beard short so, <laughs> oh, he, <laughs> so he's not a sand monster. 
Yeah, he gets all the sand down here on his chin. Kerry had to trim it a little bit and then he ends up licking it off and ingest way too much sand. So this is a really cool comb that I use a lot for Rudel. I got it at a beauty supply store. It has a razor inside it. So it can't cut him, but it cuts the hair. He gets really long hair underneath his chin. Someone else decided they needed a trim as well. Time to go swim in, get the hair off a little bit. And I will admit the water is still cold. It has not warmed up any. <laughs> Are you sure? I found a jellyfish on the shore. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in, jump right out. Okay. Outside air temperature? Yeah, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the end of February. There was a cold spell that just came across this area. So if you come here, your experience may vary. I think this is pretty cold water temperature for this time of year. I knew it was in the 50s. 59, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed. That's it's cold. cold. than last time. That's what I thought. Yeah, I don't have rain freeze or nothing. I probably could have stayed out. I wouldn't say it's warm though. No, it's, it's not warm, but it's not freezing. This from the guy who swam in Lake Superior. Way warmer than that. <laughs> I don't know what he is doing out here. What are you doing? I just started digging a hole and I thought maybe I was digging for a buried treasure. Big piece of metal here and some burnt wood. And you can just dig as deep as you can in this sand. It just keeps going. Why did you just decide to dig a hole here? <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> I wonder how deep You're I... You're standing in the bottom of that? Yeah. I wonder how deep I can get it. Well, you are gonna fill that, right? When you're done? Oh, of course. Of course I'm gonna fill it. <laughs> wow. You're getting sand in your hair. If I dig deep enough, I might get down to water. You might, yeah. I think you need some sandcastle making materials. Yeah, it's getting wetter. Hi, Rudel. Hi. Hi, Rudel. What is he doing? What is he doing, Rudel? going for another swim again. This will be the third swim after you've dug a sand hole? Yep. Let me show you how deep that is. Let me get in it. Oh. <laughs> I know, why did I hit you, water. Why did you just decide to do that? <laughs> it was fun. Are you bored? I am a little bored, but it, it's fun. This is what happens when you don't have um, cell reception? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of sand. That's a lot of sand. Tonight we're cooking some chicken on some oak charcoal. And we've been doing a lot of cooking lately on the fire and we thought it'd be nice to get a grill so we went and got a new grill and I'm excited to try it out here. Pretty nice to be cooking on the beach. I was able to dig it into the perfect level. 
And this is gonna be for tonight's dinner, probably tomorrow's lunch, and possibly tomorrow night's dinner. Yeah, that's a lot of chicken. It's a lot of chicken. But we like to cook outside every chance we get, not use up any of our propane. And it's just a fun experience. Especially on the beach. Especially on the beach. Oh, that looks good. Looking good. To go along with the lemon pepper chicken, we're gonna make salad tonight. This is fresh romaine lettuce that I just cut up. I'm going to mix it with some fresh spinach. We're going to put some chopped cilantro and chopped green onion. This is however much you like to taste. That's quite a bit of cilantro. I don't think I'll put all that in. I'm going to sprinkle some dried cranberries. And a little feta cheese. And for my dressing, I have homemade dressing. This is half lime juice, half olive oil, and then I mixed in garlic powder, onion powder, and minced onion into the bottle. Give it a little good shake. I'm going to mix that all up. And dinner is served. Lemon pepper chicken over salad. I want to talk about a couple things here right where that car is is where the pavement starts and this is the entryway to the beach and you can see by those posts the vehicles cannot go any further in that direction so all traffic is going to go down the beach in the opposite direction so what I want to say is if you have a tool a heavy two-wheel drive vehicle like we do you may consider camping as close as you can to the entryway just because it's easy to get stuck out here and also this gives you a place to walk the beach without any traffic beyond these posts or if you have kids or dogs it's a place to relax but if you have a four-wheel drive an off-road vehicle you can go down this beach for up to 60 miles and once you get about a mile down the beach that's where the crowds thin out and you'll probably be camping by yourself if that's what you want to do or you can camp in the first half mile or so if you want other people around. Now, if you want to come and camp with just about nobody here, you just come on a cloudy, windy, rainy type day and nobody wants to be down at the beach except for all of the birds. And there is quite a few birds here today. It's 
kind of cool watching the sand move across. And I hope my audio is okay because as you can see, the wind is blowing. I think it's a great day to be at the beach. A quick update from the island. More than 100,000 pounds of dead fish have now been removed from the canals out there on Padre Island, all the result of the big freeze a couple of weeks ago. We wanted to get out and explore today around the national park just to see what it has to offer and this was first on our list to stop and this is a basically a giant bird blind and i think the reason why carrie's here is because of the turtles on the other side yes are you getting any good shots of the turtles wait i'm waiting for these ones to come up on the shore have you even checked the ducks out yet or just the turtles um i looked at the ducks but mainly the turtles <laughs> So as you can see, they got little windows cut in here and then there's the pond. And what you can't probably see in the GoPro is the other side is completely packed with turtles. Oh, it's this side over here. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Homemade blind just for kicking back. You can sit in the chairs and the bench here and just watch the ducks and the wildlife. And you also get a block from the wind. This is Bird Island Campground right here. And these sites are all on the waterfront. They're $8 a night. There's no water here in this campground, but there is water about two miles away in the other campground along with the dump station. And what's cool here is not only can you windsurf, and that's what it's known for, very popular, but you can have your craft, your watercraft right alongside your vehicle and launch right from your campsite. I can see a few windsurfers out there today. Hi, Roodle Doodle. Hi. How you doing? Good boy. Good boy. It is windy. Good day for windsurfing. Yeah. Fish are jumping out here. Oh, there's fish jumping? Yeah. Cool. Are you getting any good shots of the windsurfers? Oh, uh, they went the other way. I know. You're pretty far away right now. They got to come back this way. Looks like the perfect day for it.
Today, we woke up to hundreds of volunteers participating in the annual Padre Island National Seashore Cleanup. Unfortunately, we were not able to participate in this event as this group was traveling miles down the beach where four-wheel drive is absolutely needed. We want to thank all the volunteers who gathered five large dumpsters of trash. That is pretty amazing. If you come here, don't forget to pick up your free bags at the visitor center gift shop. They'll hand them out to you. We're gonna go on a little walk, see if we can pick up some trash with our neighbor, new friends and nomads, and see what we can find. A couple things I really liked about this location. One was the pelicans gliding over the top of the van. Yes. Now it's late February, even though it's cloudy and windy and a little bit rainy, still been like 70 degrees every day. Yeah, it's been nice. The other thing is going to sleep at night, listening to the waves crash against the shoreline. I've had the best night's sleep <laughs> in over a month. Yes. So what do you need to know if you come here? The cell reception is very poor. In fact, if you stand on top of a sand dune like we are, you might get one bar of Verizon. Yeah, that's about it. So don't yes. plan on a whole lot of cell reception. <laughs> you can have fires on the beach. They just want you to make sure you cover them up with sand before you leave. Yeah. The Malachite Visitor Center is very close, less than a mile away. They have cold showers. Um, water. Water. And a dump station. And a dump station. There are two campgrounds in this park. Malachite Campground, which is $14 a night, and the Windsurfing Campground, yeah. which is $8 a night. Yep. So if you don't want to come on the sand and... There's other options. <laughs> yeah, and if you do come on the sand, make sure you bring traction boards if you're two-wheel drive because you'll probably need them. Yes, you will definitely <laughs> need them. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.